Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. My name is James, and here at 20th and 21st Movies, we are about all things cinema. I'm really excited today to share with you my thoughts on a film that I just recently watched. This is a recent release from the Criterion Collection, and that is the Blu-ray upgrade of Masculine Feminine, the 1966 French New Wave film that was co-produced in Sweden and France, and it was directed by Jean-Luc Godard, and it stars Jean-Pierre Lyot, who appeared in Francois Truffaut's The 400 Blows, singer Chantal Goya, Marlene Jobert, Michel Duport, and Catherine Isabel Duport. This is a really, really nice film. So I haven't seen all of Jean-Luc Godard's filmography, but I have had the opportunity to watch a number of his films, particularly his films in the French New Wave era, including Breathless, Vivre Sa Vie, Band of Outsiders, in addition to Weekend, Every Man for Himself. Jean-Luc Godard had a really interesting filmmaking style, and his films speak to people in different ways. It's commonly said that you either love Godard or you hate Godard. I happen to fall in the love camp. I love Jean-Luc Godard's films, and for me, Masculine Feminine definitely rises close to the top for me of Jean-Luc Godard's films. This is an absolutely terrific film from Jean-Luc Godard, and this is a very nice addition from Criterion that I'm very happy that I picked up. So the director of The 400 Blows, Francois Truffaut, was actually pretty instrumental in introducing his star in that film, Jean-Pierre Lyot, to Jean-Luc Godard. And that was the start of Jean-Pierre Lyot appearing in a number of Godard films and then working together over a number of years. And I believe Jean-Pierre Lyot appeared in about eight of Godard's films. So that was the start of a long-term collaboration, his introduction to Godard, courtesy of Francois Truffaut. Okay, so to sum it up, what is this film about? You see this cover, you see this young lady on the cover here, and you wonder what is what is this film? What is Masculine Feminine about? This film, Masculine Feminine, is about youth culture and sex in the mid-1960s Paris, France scene. And in the words of Godard, this is a sociological film about young people. So that's sort of a summary of what this film's about. And to read the back of the Criterion disc case here, it says Masculine Feminine. With Masculine Feminine, ruthless stylist and iconoclast Jean-Luc Godard introduces the world to the children of Marx and Coca-Cola through a gang of restless youths engaged in hopeless love affairs with music, revolution, and one another. French New Wave icon Jean-Pierre Léon stars as Paul, an idealist would-be intellectual struggling to forge a relationship with the adorable pop star Madeleine, real-life yay-yay girl Chantal Goya. Through their tempestuous affair, Godard fashions a candid and wildly funny free-form examination of youth culture in pulsating 1960s Paris, mixing satire and tragedy as only Godard can. So this summary on the back of the Criterion disc case perfectly encapsulates this film. This film is such an incredible film that I really, really enjoyed. And I'm actually in the process of my second viewing of this film. This is a film that you will definitely appreciate even more the more times you see it because there's so much depth and nuance that's going on in this film as it explores the complexity of the relationships between Paul and Madeline and their love affair, but also their relationships with their group of friends. So this film plays out as an examination of the 1965 romance or love affair between Paul, played by Jean-Pierre Léod, who was recently released from the French army, is now working as a pollster. He's sitting in a cafe in Paris, France, and in walks in Chantal Goya's character, Madeleine, who is a singer and she works at a fashion magazine. They strike up a conversation and that's the beginning of their relationship. That starts a love affair or romance between the two of them. So this film covers the romance of Paul and Madeline through a series of 15 vignettes. And it covers their romance with each other and also their relationships with their group of friends. And these friends explore the dynamics of relationships, of sex, politics, world events, commercialism, and pop culture which is a huge part of this film. Pop culture references are all throughout Masculine Feminine, including references to the Beatles, to the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, Charles de Gaulle, James Bond, and on and on. There's so many 
pop culture references in this film. And that's one of the neat parts of Masculine and Feminine is that it's a window into the mid 1960s, what was going on from a pop culture standpoint at that time, but it's also very forward looking in the way that we handle pop culture in today's world. And that's, that's one of the cool aspects of this film that I found to be really fascinating. And really, it's really an example of how forward thinking Jean-Luc Godard was in his filmmaking as well. So one of the many aspects that I like about this film is I love the cinema verite documentary type style of filmmaking that went into making Masculine Feminine. And watching this, you feel like you're a fly on the wall just watching people live out their lives in a natural way. That's what Jean-Luc Godard was going for in this film and I think he absolutely nailed it. It makes the viewer feel like they're sitting there watching people live out real life instead of watching actors recite a script. So the conversations between Paul and the various women in the film were often in the form of interviews. And these interviews or question sessions were a really fascinating window into not only how people thought and process information and the events going around them during that time in the mid 1960s, but is sort of symbolic of the way that people process the things that are going around them in the day's world. Really nothing really has changed in the way that people sort of process and take things in here almost 60 years later. The way that people thought back then is very similar to the way that people in our modern world think today. And I think that's one of the forward looking aspects of masculine and feminine that I think was brilliantly portrayed in Jean-Luc Godard's approach to making this film. So I, I absolutely love that aspect of this movie. And it's part of the reason why I'm watching it again, because I'm picking up nuances that I didn't pick up on the first viewing of this film. This is definitely a film that you'll want to sort of wash over you and sort of process it and then, you know, have a second viewing of it and see what you think. But I, I really enjoyed watching this film. Okay, so overall, I can't say enough good things about this film. Masculine Feminine, to me, is now one of my favorite Jean-Luc Godard films. If I had to rank Jean-Luc Godard films, I'm not gonna do it right here. Of course, obviously, Breathless would be near the top for me. I, I like Vivre Sa I like Band of Outsiders. I like Pierre Le Few. I like Every Man For Himself. I'd have to take some time to think about how I would rank Jean-Luc Godard's films if I had to do it. So I'll take some time to think about that and I might come back with a ranking of his films, but I can definitely tell you for sure that Masculine Feminine would be very near the top of the list. It's an absolutely fantastic film from Jean-Luc Godard and I'm so happy that I picked up this edition from Criterion. So I highly recommend this title just on the strength of the film alone. It is really a fascinating examination of youth culture in the 1960s in Paris, France. Highly, highly recommended. This is a great film from Jean-Luc Godard and this is a great edition from Criterion overall. As far as video and audio, how does this new 4K Blu-ray upgrade from Criterion look and sound? Well, this is a new 4K digital restoration approved by cinematographer Willie Current with an uncompressed monaural soundtrack. And in a nutshell, this Blu-ray looks and sounds great. The 4K digital restoration work that Criterion did they did a really good job on this. I mean, this is a black and white film and the black and white photography looks really, really good on this Blu-ray. So you do have some soft spots in this film, but for most of the runtime of this film, there is a great amount of detail that you're gonna see in this 4K restored image, whether it's in the clothing of the characters, the faces, the hair, the objects in the scenes. There's a lot of nice detail in this image. It has a really nice organic feel to this image. There's good contrast, really good definition across the board. Overall, I was very happy with the high definition presentation on this, on this Blu-ray disc. I think the 4K digital restoration work was excellent. So overall, the 4K digital restoration looks really, really nice. They did a great job of cleaning up any dirt scratches or blemishes in the image. It looked clean overall, nicely detailed. So from a video standpoint, I was very pleased with this black and white picture. I think Criterion did a really nice job. 
From an audio standpoint, I thought the audio sounded really, really nice. Chantal Goya is a singer, and of course, a number of her songs were part of the soundtrack for this film. So there were some really nice tunes from her that you'll hear on this Blu-ray. So that's definitely part of the reason you'll wanna check out this edition. So the music came across really nice. The voices of the characters and the dialogue, I thought, was very easy to hear. Of course, I was reading the subtitles because I can't speak French. That's actually something that I, I, I'm gonna have as a personal goal of mine is I wanna learn French and I wanna learn Spanish. So let me know in the comments below if that's a goal of yours as well because if I can learn those languages, I won't have to read the subtitles. I can actually understand what the characters are actually saying without having to read the film. So. That's, that's definitely a goal of mine that I wanna strive for here in the next, say, year or so, is to learn French, be able to speak it fluently, and learn Spanish the same way. That's a pretty high goal, but I'm gonna shoot for it. So we'll see what happens. So overall, from an audio standpoint, you can hear the music really well. The dialogue came across really clean. Everything in the soundscape you could make out pretty well. I was very pleased overall with the audio presentation. So from a video and audio standpoint, this release from Criterion gets very, very high marks. Highly, highly recommended. Great presentation from Criterion. Okay, as far as supplements, you'll wanna note a couple of things. This edition from Criterion carries over all the supplements from the previous DVD, the 2005 DVD edition. So this new Blu-ray upgrade carries over all those supplements and there are no new supplements on this edition. So these are the same supplements that appeared on the 2005 DVD. So you will wanna take note of that, especially if you already own that 2005 DVD. So the features on here are all very good. I've had a chance to go through all of them and they are all excellent. It's not a stacked edition, but the features on here are, are quite good. So you have a couple of interviews from Chantal Goya, one from 1966 at the time that this film came out, and one about nearly 40 years later in 2005. So it's always interesting to see those types of interviews, you know, when of an actor during the time that they made the film, and 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 then many years later to get their their sort of their retrospective look on the film that they made so many decades or years previous. So that's interesting. You also have an interview on here with Willie Current, who was the cinematographer on this film that was very, very good. And you've also got an interview with Jean-Luc Godard collaborator, Jean-Pierre Gorin. He and Jean-Luc Godard made a number of films together. So that is a, a really nice interview on here with Jean-Pierre Gorin. And then the next feature on here is a feature that I really, really enjoyed. And this was a discussion with two film critics from 2004 between Freddie Balsh and Dominic Pay and I, and I thought that interview was excellent. They talked about their perspective of the film at the time it came out in 1966. They didn't really think of it very favorably when it first came out, but their appreciation of the film has grown over the years, and they talk about that in this, in this uh, discussion between them from 2004. You also have some footage from Swedish television of Godard directing the film within the film scene. So one of the scenes in this film, the characters go to a movie theater and they watch a, a film and Godard shot that footage of that film within a film in Sweden. So that's part of the reason why it's called a Swedish French production is part of the production was in Sweden uh, where they were shooting the film within a film and that's what's included on here, a little bit of footage from Swedish television covering Godard shooting that part. You'll wanna pay attention to what Godard says about why he was spending time in Sweden, which sort of gives you a, a glimpse into the way that Godard was thinking and some of his motivations and part of what drove his filmmaking. I, I, I thought his answer was, was, was pretty interesting. So you'll wanna check that out in that feature. There's also an essay by film critic Adrian Martin in a 1966 report from the set by French journalist Philippe Lebreau that's included inside here in this insert. So this insert looks like 
It's sort of made to look like a fashion magazine, I, I suppose. And this disc here looks like a record. Of course, Chantal Goya's character, Madeleine, was a singer in the film. Chantal Goya is a singer in real life. And so I really like the touch of making this a record. Of course, when you pull out the actual book, you'll see that this stapled booklet has on the back here, you've got, right, on the back of the booklet, you have the famous saying, the children of Marx and Coca-Cola. Of course, it's Les Enfants de Marx et de Coca-Cola. It's in French, I believe. And of course, inside here, you've got the two essays. You've got cast and crew information there. Of course, you have inside here the essay from Adrian Martin called The Young Man for All Times, which is a very nice essay from Adrian Martin. And then you've also got the second essay on the set of Masculine Feminine, which is also a very, very nice essay. So this stapled booklet has some really, really nice essays and information about the film inside. I love the disc art on here. So overall, this is a really, really nice addition from Criterion. I really enjoyed watching this film, going through all the supplements, and this is definitely an addition that I highly recommend if you don't already own the Criterion DVD from 2005. I would say that if you already own the DVD from 2005 and if you're happy with the picture quality on that DVD, I don't recommend picking up this Blu-ray upgrade. All you would get is the upgraded picture, which of course a new 4K digital restoration is going to look better than that DVD image. But if you're already happy with the DVD image that you already have, it already has all the special features that are included on this edition. This edition does not add any new special features. So the 2005 DVD includes all the supplements that are on this new Blu-ray edition. The only difference is the upgraded picture. So you have to decide for yourself if it's worth getting this edition for the upgraded picture only because the supplements are the same or just sticking with your DVD copy. In my case, I didn't have a copy of this film at all, so it was pretty much a no-brainer to pick this up. So I am very happy that I did, and if you don't already own a copy of Masculine Feminine on DVD, I highly, highly recommend picking up this edition from Criterion. It's an excellent film. I think it's one of Jean-Luc Godard's best films, and you get a pretty nice collection of special edition features on here, some nice supplements that give you a little bit more context on the director, on the making of this film, and the actors that were involved. So highly, highly recommend it. This is an excellent, excellent edition from Criterion. All right, so there you have it. Those are my thoughts, my review of the recent Blu-ray upgrade from Criterion of Masculine Feminine, the 1966 film from Jean-Luc Godard. This is an excellent, excellent film and an excellent addition from Criterion. I really enjoyed this one. And it's definitely one that I'm looking forward to finishing, watching it for the second time. And it's one that I'm gonna revisit from time to time. And I'm sure every time that I do, I'm gonna pick up a nuance pick up something that I didn't pick up on the earlier viewings, but this is an excellent film that I highly recommend. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this film. Do you already have a copy of Masculine Feminine? Do you have this Blu-ray? Do you have the previous DVD edition of this film? If so, let me know in the comments below what you think of this film and of Jean-Luc Godard's films. And if you have a favorite film from Jean-Luc Godard, let me know that in the comments below. Also, let me know what additions from Criterion you are most looking forward to in the remainder of 2021. What additions from Criterion are you looking most forward to picking up in the next few months? Let me know that in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time in the movies. Peace.